Hello and welcome back and today I want to tell you guys about just how to convert your physical PC, your Windows PC there, into a virtual equivalent to be uh, installed and deployed from your Synology NAS over the network or the internet. Now, it's worth mentioning that virtual machines are not a new thing. Virtual machines in one form or another have been around for, you know, decade upon decade. Whether you've been using terminals in libraries back in the early 2000s all the way through to a lot of online platforms that utilize um, cloud-based computing to allow you to have a virtual terminal. But so many of us still utilize physical desktop PCs and laptops and more in our own environments. But with the way the world's been changing from everything from viruses to natural disasters to the appeal of working from home or on remote deployment, it's becoming quite trendy to run virtual machines and it's become one of the main reasons that a lot of people buy network attached storage drives. Now Synology has its own virtual machine platform as you can see on screen and what I'm going to show you today is how to convert your PC into this virtual machine and therefore you can access it anywhere in the world with the right credentials or just over the network and if you're someone that you know works on the commute quite a lot maybe is deployed in coffee shops quite a lot between meetings this will allow you to have that single user interface that can be accessed via a laptop or a tablet to give you that virtual machine so let's carry on now there's a number of things as you can see from screen at the top right there what we're going to need for this series so i'm going to be doing this on different nas drives i'm focused on synology first is a lot of you have already got synology nas is being utilized for backup purposes or plex or something and you're trying to make the most of the device now in the background during the course of this video we do have construction work taking place in the building so if you hear the odd drilling noise there that isn't me trying to get this thing to work on my laptop but more someone working on the internal walls of this building but without further ado let's get going so the first thing you're going to need is of course a real windows computer now a lot of you might be using um a pc right now but i can tell you right now that if you're not using a legitimate validated version of windows there's a good chance this is not going to work because the tools that we're using some of which are official tools and if you don't have a legitimate version of windows you might go all the way through the creation part of this virtual machine video and get all the way to the end and it will fail because you're using a non-validated version of windows so ensure that you're either using a validated and real copy of windows or if your pc still got that windows activation thing floating on the bottom right just go into the settings options and get that validated the next thing you're going to need is this tool disk to vhd now there's loads of tools out there to convert your windows pc into a usable image my um, windows themselves have a few things built into them but i recommend this one because you are going to create a hyper v image or namely a vhd image and this vhd image is what we're going to deploy onto the synology virtual machine manager software later so just type in disk to vhd into google and trust me you'll find this page i know it seems old but that's because this tool has supported everything all the way back to windows xp and i think even before it um, the next tool you're going to have to think about utilizing is of course the nas itself now Chances are the PC you're going to be creating a virtual copy of will have different hardware to that of the NAS you're going to utilize. It's going to be very, very low in terms of statistical likelihood that you own a NAS that's got the exact same hardware as your laptop or PC. And now the Windows Virtual Machine Manager will adapt and Windows 10 has that adaption built into it to allow um, just configuration options to change between boot ups of a virtual image and remember the virtual image you create is supposed to be exactly the same as your standard pc but of course because you're going to utilize a different cpu and possible ram amount the virtual machine may work differently or perform differently in the synology environment than it does in the physical world so do bear in mind that poor exporting a physical pc into a virtual version onto a synology nas if you don't have the same hardware, there may be inconsistencies to be aware of later on down the line. I nevertheless recommend if you are going to use a Synology NAS, make sure it's at least an Intel or an AMD powered one. 
a 64-bit x86 based processor, four cores I would recommend because you're going to dedicate at least two cores to this virtual machine. And in terms of memory, you can get away with two gig of memory, but I recommend at least four gig to be utilized by any virtual machine. As you can see from the screen here, I was utilizing this NAS, a 1019 Plus, for Windows Server 2016 with two cores and four gig of memory. I will be removing this VM later, this old virtual machine, but these are the kind of appropriate values that I'm going to be utilizing on this device. Now next, you have to make sure that you're using the right tool, which in terms of Synology is Virtual Machine Manager, and make sure you've got that updated to the latest version. And finally, we're going to need an external drive to export our image onto, because when you create an image of your PC, you can't hold that image on the PC when you create it, because you're exporting this. So you need to make sure you've either got an external drive connected to export your your image onto or map a NAS drive such as the NAS you're going to be utilizing today and then export onto that. But it's worth highlighting that exporting using the disk to VHD tool onto a mapped network drive will often be slower than an external disk because an external disk may be connected via USB or Thunderbolt Whereas a mapped network drive will likely be connected via 1 gigabit Ethernet, some 100 megabytes per second. So do bear that in mind. Sorry, I'm running an update there in the background. So those are all the tools and all the things we need to make sure we have. And without further ado, let's get started. So once you've gone to Disk2VHD and downloaded the tool, it will open up uh, if you're using WinRAR like me, you will open this, or you can use WinZip to see the contents. And you need to execute or double-click disk2vhd.exe. Once you've opened it up, you'll be presented with this screen here. And when this opens up, this is disk2vhd, these are the options you can see currently available. Now, the first thing it will do is ask you to pick where you want the external, the, the image you're creating to be exported to, in other words, where you're saving it. I'm saving it to that externally connected drive. I go into it, create a subfolder, because it will be easier for later, and then give it a name. I'm gonna go with the name of my PC as it is, but you can call it whatever you like, and then click Save. This now will create this path where your VHD file is gonna go as it's created. The next thing you need to do is select what um, storage media is going to be utilized in this virtual machine. Now, if you've connected an external drive like I have, make sure you've unticked that option because you don't want to make an image of the drive you're saving to. It won't make sense. But make sure your C drive or any other external drives that are used for backup or drivers, such as I'm going with these three, are saved. Also bear in mind that you'll need to make sure the external drive you're using has sufficient space. I'm pleased to say that this external drive I'm using is nearly 500 gig, and although the C drive I'm using is 467 gig, I've still only utilized 341, which means it will still fit onto this external drive. Do make sure that you've checked that you've got enough space on the external drive before beginning the creation of the virtual machine. Once you've ticked these appropriate drives, get ready to click create. But before you do it, bear in mind that this is going to take a heck of a long time. We are talking 10, 12, 15, 16 hours or more, depending on the complexity of your system and the amount of storage in mind. This virtual machine, for example, this virtual machine um, exported from my physical machine, is going to take around 10 to 12 hours. So I'm gonna to have to fast forward to tomorrow. So if you're gonna follow these steps, I recommend you do it just before you go to sleep so you can wake up with a, the majority of this job being completed. But bear in mind that you cannot disconnect the external drive or power down or put your PC in hibernation during this operation. So make sure you do it when you've got at least 12 to 24 hours for the operation to complete. Where I have, so from now on, I'm going to click create and begin the virtual creation of this external drive. 
you'll see shortly as it's beginning the creation and going to be using a shadow copy to double check that it's all running correctly. It's now telling me that it's going to take upwards of 18 hours going down to 14. Obviously, I'm using screen recording software here, which will increase the time frame. I'm going to turn off that screen recording software shortly, which should lower this time to about 10 hours. But for now, I'm going to fast forward to when this virtual uh, hard drive is going to be created, and I'm going to export it to the Synology NAS. So let's fast forward. Right, so it took a long time, but we have the virtual equivalent of our physical PC from disk to VHD. There was a little bit of a hiatus, a combination of two things really. One, it was the PC itself taking forever to do the scan and the virtual machine clone, and also to do with lots of fun with self-isolation, which meant I had to be away from death for an extra bit of time. But as you can see, it has created that VHD file that we talked about earlier on. It's on our external drive, and then now next we have to move this file over to our Synology NAS. Nice and simple, log into your Synology NAS as you normally would, go into File Station, and select the directory that you want to put this file into. For me, I'm going to head over to the Home folder here, where I've got lots of different bits and bobs here, lots of ISOs and stuff like that. And I've already uploaded the file for us right here. As you can see, it's already been uploaded. Same file, same size, all the rest of it. There is our virtual file uploaded. Our virtual hard disk is ready. So what do we need to do next? Well, we have to make our way over to this Synology Virtual Machine Manager. So head over to the Application Center. If you've not already installed it, it's nice and simple and it's free. Go to the App Center or um, just directly download it. A lot of times you get the opportunity to delay, uh, install certain files when you set up the device for the first time and head over to the Virtual Machine Manager. From here, you'll see that I've already actually deployed the Virtual Machine in terms of testing for this video in advance. I'm also doing this to save you a lot of time because the next few stages will take a great deal of time. So I'm going to show you how it's done and then skip forward. So you're not going to see all three of these boxes green. You're probably going to see just the one. Um, but what we need to do, once we've uploaded the VHD image that we created, we need to, in Virtual Machine Manager, go down to the Image tab. From the Image tab, we then make our way up to the top where it says Disk Image. And as you can see, I'm already doing different multiple images for a future video coming soon. So you can kind of ignore these temporarily. But what you need to do is head up to Add, then select From Synology NAS, find the VHD file we created earlier. There it is. Click Select. Give it a name. Obviously, I've created this already in preparation for the video, but we're going to call it 3.3. Um, then we're going to click Next. Then select where on the NAS you want this virtual hard disk image to live. We're going to go for the main storage. Make sure it's an SHR. Click Apply. And now it will start unpacking this virtual hard disk. As you can see here, that's the one that we've just created. Now, I'm not going to make you wait for that one because you can see they take quite a lot of time. I have already created one in advance for this video. So now you need to head over to the Virtual Machine option. And what we're going to do now is we're going to delete the one that's on there already. We're going to delete that one. That's one I've created in advance because I'm going to show you guys how to do this from scratch. So I'm going to delete that VM. And then what we're going to do is set up this VM for the very first time from the VHD file that we've now created a virtual image of. So normally you would click Create to create a VM, but because we're using a pre-existing setup, click the Down button and select Import. From the Import option, make sure you select Import from Disk Images. Then click Next. It will then ask you to select the storage that you're searching, which is the main storage that we selected earlier. And then we have to assign some hardware values to our virtual machine. Remember, in almost all in instances, the NAS will not have the same hardware as your virtual machine. But there are ways around that that I'll show you in just a moment. I would recommend at least two cores to a VM and at least two gig or four ideally in terms of memory. But of course, the complexity of the VM you choose will of course f uh, affect the number of CPU cores and memory that you put on here. So we'll put that there. 
We'll leave the other options as default and you can tinkle with these later down the line. Move forward and then it'll ask you to select the disk. Here's the disk I've already completed and deployed earlier, but your one will be present here as soon as it's finished on that image tab. Select it and it will already pre-select the storage. You can increase this value if you so choose. As long as you don't go lower than that sum, you should be fine. Then click next. Ask it to go with the default network unless you've created a bespoke virtual network system. And from here, I do recommend installing it in at least one of these folders, the Synology VM tool. It will ask you to um, if you want to install it when you first install Virtual Machine Manager for the first time. But I recommend putting in at least one of these two bays. The reason being is this disk contains Windows drivers, which will help smooth the process out when deploying a Windows VM. So when you're, extra when you're exporting your physical machine into a virtual machine and then deploying it on the NAS, chances are you're going to need the drivers on this disk to keep the whole thing together. Whether the VM boots for the very first time, good for you, or you use the Windows tool to do a repair, which is quite often on physical PCs once a configuration changes, such as de increasing or decreasing memory or updating BIOS. From here, we can change the BIOS options or, and more, as well as op options with regards to the keyboards and USB devices. But for now, we're going to leave all of those at default. Then you have to say who, who, who can use the virtual machine on this Synology NAS. Different users that you've got on your NAS will be listed and you can say who can have access to it. But bear in mind that two users accessing this VM will still see the same VM. They will share the control and share the output. They won't have their own individual session. And there you go, it's completed. From now, I'm gonna click apply and then it's going to create the virtual machine based on the parameters and virtual image that I've recommended. This can take anywhere from 2 minutes to 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the complexity of the virtual machine you're running. In my case, it's happened very quickly, and now it's done. So from this point, all we need to do is power on the VM. Now, when you power on a VM for the first time, it's a bit like powering on a new PC for the first time. It, if it goes smoothly first time, I'll be amazed. Click Connect to see in your browser the virtual machine. As you can see, it's had difficulty finding the bootable device in this very first occasion. Chances are we need to go into the settings of this VM and we're going to force shut down there, make our way into the virtual disk and make sure it's reading from the right areas. Once you've double checked that the CDs and the virtual disks are all in the correct alignment for your virtual machine, go ahead and go back to powering it on. In my case, because I had the same virtual disk from Synology in both bays, this prevented a full boot up. From now, it should boot directly into Windows or it will boot into the Windows repair tool as you would expect from a virtual machine if you'd played with the memory or BIOS options as mentioned earlier. As you can see, we're booting into the Windows option here and unfortunately because I'm transferring from a 16 gig system to a 2 gig memory system, we are going to see a drop in performance. We can see the virtual machine running, but we can see that the performance of this Synology NAS is obviously being pushed to quite substantial limits. Now, as the virtual machine manager is being handled, uh, is handling the virtual machine, you'll be able to see that the deployment of your virtual machine will differ to mine. Maybe it'll be quicker, maybe it'll be slower. It's often better to deploy a brand new VM from scratch compared with creating a virtual equivalent unless you're using a NAS that is substantially more powerful than the virtual machine you're creating. For now, it looks like this screen's going to be with us for a while, so rather than make you guys wait, I think I'm going to skip forward and end this video. I've got a few more Virtual Machine videos uh, happening very, very soon, and it'd be great for you guys to check those out. I hope you found this video helpful, or if you are trying to set up your own bespoke Virtual Machine environment and haven't found this video helpful, maybe I've already got another video out there already, or one in the works. So why not message me at NAS Compares or at SPAN, and let me know what you guys need. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.